Alright, hello there. Um, this video is going to be going over how to get our ship here to fire projectiles uh, towards the, the top where the enemies are going to be coming from. Um, if you want this set up, um, there, I do have a tutorial on how to make this kind of d-pad uh, system uh, on YouTube. I will uh, provide a link to that down in the description so you can access that. That was technically part one. Um, I didn't decide to make a, a series out of this until after that. So, so we'll go ahead and do this. And the first things first, oh, my... All right, let's open up the content browser. And first, I think we should pop into our widgets and create our button. So to go ahead and do that, we'll just drag the button and text right down here. Let's delete that, we don't need that. Okay, and let's grab our anchor. Uh, grab the button itself, and we'll have the anchor here. We'll bring, drop that down to the left tick these little guys here. Let's... Oh god, I'm lagging a little bit. This guy just over, just so we could see it. Okay, button, size to content. Grab our text block. We'll type in fire. And so let's make this uh, 60. Why not? grab our button and kind of just drag it up just a little bit just enough so we can s access it in the game because we'll set everything else up later so we're going to call this fire button just go ahead and click here type in fire button and compile save and we'll go over to the graph now click on your fire button here in the variables uh, panel and you want to hit the plus sign for on clicked now we don't actually have the event set up in our player, so we'll go ahead and do that now. Go into your player blueprint, and again, uh, follow the first tutorial before you move on here because this uses a variable that we set up in the HUD for the actual player. So go ahead and go back and follow that if you need to. Um, okay, so we want to add a custom event. We'll call it fire. And we want to drag off spawn actor from class. And then let's go into the viewport here, add component, and we want an arrow. Um, let's name this guy spawn point. And then just go ahead and drag this guy so it's right in front of your ship here. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Um, ah, okay. Sorry. So, it's because this guy's here, but we won't worry about that right now. Click and drag your spawn point arrow component that you just created out and get world transform. And then plug that into the spawn transform. Save. It's not going to compile because we don't have a class here yet. So let's go ahead and create that class now. Go back to Blueprints, right click, Blueprint Class, of type Actor here. And we'll name this guy Projectile. I'll save. Okay. So now in the, the components, we want to add a static mesh first. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to keep it like that. And then I have a plane here because I'm working with sprites, so I'm going to be applying these sprites uh, to um, like planes. Uh, but here, we, we, well, we won't really need to. We could just apply a uh, emissive material for a laser with an alpha uh, to make it look like an actual laser beam. Um, I have my projectile material. It's just a red emissive material, nothing special. And you want to disable gravity. Make sure you click that on the static mesh. So I'll go ahead and set this up. Uh, this setup here will depend solely on um, 
whatever mesh you have but right here I am making sure that the object is facing the world X direction as you can see down here um, it's facing the X direction there and that's that's very important because that's uh, what the next component will be so shorten this guy um, well, it's too big still. Let's make them a bit smaller, make them a bit shorter. And we'll test it out, but I think that might be good. Compile. And then add component. Ox collision. And what we want, oh, what we want to do is just size this guy up to our projectile here. Uh, and if you press F on your keyboard with something selected, it'll focus select on it. Um, let's make this a little, little bit shorter, but we want thickness to the uh, box collision. Because we are working with sprites and planes and things like that, we still want something that can collide so we can, uh, so our objects can re react accordin accordingly. So, Okay, now add component, projectile movement. And in here, oh, also disable gravity on the box collision as well. And go into projectile movement. We'll set our initial speed to 1500, max speed to 2500, projectile gravity scale to zero. Um, and as you can see here, the velocity is set to one in the x direction, which is what I was talking about here. Um, if you know your ob your projectile is facing the wrong direction, just go ahead and change this to zero and change one uh, to the direction that it's facing. Compile, save. Now go back to your player blueprint. And what we want to do is select our projectile in the spawn actor. Compile, save, and we are good. So now we'll go back over to our HUD here, and we have our fire button. Now drag off of the player variable that you made in the first tutorial. Click and drag that off. Type in fire. And this is actually calling that custom event that we created in the player blueprint. It's calling this event right here. Um, so that should be everything. Let's try it out. And we have a projectile firing. Now, there's one more issue that we are running into here, and I'll show it off again here. If you take a look at the world outliner over here, when I fire these, I get a ton of projectiles just kind of going in the X direction in this map. We don't want that. So go ahead, back into our projectile, and go to your event graph, and with your box selected, scroll down, and you want on component begin overlap. So tick that plus button right there. Now drag off other actor, type in get class. This is for future setup here, but I'll show you. Okay, um, and then class is child of. And we'll leave this empty, but this is where the enemy blueprint is gonna go. So it's detecting if it hits the enemy. And then drag off here, we'll do a branch, and then plug the branch into the overlap event. And now on false, we want it to destroy the actor. Um, as of right now, it's never going to be true because we don't have um, this specified for one. But you know, two, we don't actually have an enemy um, class created. So. so every time it collides with something, uh, AKA, you know, a box collision that we have in our level, it's going to destroy the projectile. So let's give that a try. Go back here so we can look at our world outliner. And I'll fire. And we're having an issue. And I know exactly what it is. So right here, we have keeping this empty is basically saying, um, any anything that's in a blueprint anything that's considered a class if it collides with me 
I'm destroying. Now, the reason for that is our static mesh, when it gets spawned, is actually colliding with the box collision itself. So click on the static mesh, and we want to go to collision presets, no collision. Compile, save, and now, let's minimize that. By fire, see it's spawning them, but it actually destroys them after because there's a box collision right up here that's actually destroying them. So yeah, that is uh, part one of our, or technically part two, of our um, top-down mobile um, shooter game. So thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.